Hunters are proud of their catch. Sometimes it's not enough just to capture, kill, and then feast. Sometimes it's about the gutting, the drying, the stuffing. A knife with flesh like fabric. A needle stitching up the skin. Glue stuck behind a pair of glass eyes. Preservation must be perfect unless you want them crawlers beneath the floorboards eating off all your hard work. A pretty little doll. Hair done nice. Clothes all clean. A perfect hunter. It's not about the blood or the meat. It's about the carcass and how to make it ready for display. Happy hunting out there, folks. And we invite you to make something of yourself here at the Velvet Lodge. Hello, and welcome back to the Velvet Lodge. Now that you have placed the last item that you received, the clam from inside of the bathroom where you met the angler, Earl Clement, a friend of Bertie who had struggled a bit with the affliction that seemed to be, well, afflicting him. In any case, however, the box, opens once again, and out of it, you're handed another key. Oh, um. Well, that feels kind of self-explanatory. It's an insect. Oh, then we're going to that room then, the study. Yes. It's worth noting on the map, or the parlor, on the map, the this, there's different handwriting on it. Like claiming your room at summer camp? You know, like you get there, they give you the list of cabins and everyone writes their name on which one they want? That makes a lot of sense. Maybe they claimed their rooms here? Is, is that Feels weird to claim your friend's bathroom? handwriting? As far as I know, that's her hand. Taking a look at the handwriting, it does look as though it is similar to Augustina's handwriting, um, but there's something not, it's just some of the different marks are just a little bit different. It looks kind of like the, um, the way our invitations look, <laughs> where it's close enough. All these people got taken over by something. They were doing something, they were, summoning something, and it went wrong, and that's why this is going on. But what concerns me is if that isn't exactly like her handwriting, then when they picked these rooms, they may have already been <laughs> infected with whatever's... Yeah, why would Earl pick a bathroom? That doesn't... Water. Yeah, but like to be like, oh yeah, the John's mine. Like, that feels weird. You wanna know more? Yeah. Gimme, gimme, gimme. When 
did this map get filled out? <laughs> <laughs> so, as you once again focus your um, Janice's gaze onto this item, you, in the same space that you have been before, now look at it from the eyes of this piece of paper. And you see above you, older man, that same older man that you've been seeing, the sort of floppy, ragged hat, um, sort of uh, quill in hand, talking to a smaller, older woman. You've actually, you're not sure if you've seen her in any of your visions before. And um, they're sort of sitting from what you can see from your perspective at some sort of table. Um, they're both sort of leaning over you, obviously marking off things, and you can hear him um, just sort of pointing and saying, oh, well, yeah, you could, you and uh, Augustina could be there, and um, we have the extra rooms for whoever, and then, um, yeah, and she's sort of speaking as well, and she, oh, that would be nice, yes, and, oh, um, and Augustina would have a place to, to play, and, and then, you know, all of the rest of the rooms would be made for all of the other hunters who come. And he sort of, sort of, um, you can see on the face sort of this um, long, kind of scraggly beard and um, just less kept than the other uh, younger man you've seen in some of your other visions. Um, and he sort of is like rubbing and scratching it, thinking, and he goes, Yes, and you feel sort of um, on where would normally be your body, your sort of um, stomach area. You feel his finger land on it, and he goes, what do you think about there for that? And his eyes sort of look up at her, and she, I think it could fit. And he, all right. And then moving the quill over, you feel um, that kind of on the side of where like your hip would be, a note being written. And that is where your vision ends. <laughs> oh, that feels weird every time, but it's so, it's so, it's so useful. It's so useful. Um, They were putting something, they were putting, Where's the entrance? Uh, entrance to what? If they were putting something, they were talking about note. you know where to put the entrance. So I, I don't think, know. I don't know if that's it. But here's the thing: they were talking about placing something, and it went right in the middle of the map, right, right in the middle. And then, wait like a minute, I felt something on my that's hip. That's the entrance. Where did they? I'm gonna run over to the piano. The entrance is behind the piano. Yeah, is. The, is there another key permanently put down? Because one locked down. Mm -hmm. As you head over to the piano, you see that the previous one that had been sort of locked in that um, pressed space, there is another that is mimicking it. So wait, I think if we finish it, all the piano keys are gonna go down and then something's gonna open. Yeah, right, yep. That's gotta be it. It's Ooh. how the piano's moved. And that's good news. I mean, we can't get out the front door, so maybe we get out the piano door? It's the game we gotta play. It's just what we gotta do. What's, who's games. Augustina? That's your friend. It's her friend. She was my friend. She's, um, she likes taxidermy and collecting bugs. Okay. That's... She talk about it like playing? They said this is where Augustina can play. And for a second, I was like, is there a kid here? But no, 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 no. I don't, she's definitely not a child, but- Is it a hobby or a profession? She just talked about it all the time. We never really got that deep with it. Birdie, are you okay? Yeah, I'm perfectly fine, why? Are you sure? Yeah. Right, it's right. I'm, I'm just worried you saw Something horrible happened to someone you know, and... You stabbed an invisible woman with bones for heels. Yes. It's an interesting way to put it, Birdie. 
I think uh, I think our threshold for weird right now is a little skewed. Yeah. Good. That's what we finally need. This place is finally showing you what's what I've suspected has been going on. It's I, w- I wouldn't say need. Wait, suspected? Did you you had thoughts about this place before you got here? The letter talked about monsters that they'd never seen before, and the way it was describing things was very much, in a way I've seen people describing stuff like this before. Ah. Mm Mm-hmm. The other part of the scroll set was a bedroom. It's on some sort of canvas, but there's a log in the bedroom. What and I think those are tree stumps. I mean, it's rustic style. You got log furniture all over the place. Uh, People what? think it's keech. Kitchen. <laughs> We're only going in one bedroom. This is a one bedroom hunting lodge? That's weird. No, there's other chambers, but there's only one bedroom, and that's got the boar. That's weird. Which would be Mr. DuPont. Can I see them in the yeah. bedroom? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it wait. was they were talking about that wait. thing right here and then wait. it was where's the entrance? Wait, 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 what? Um That says love. And there's something there too. Oh. There's there's writing on it. <sighs> so I don't know I don't know how to look at oh, it though. My glasses are useless. Something under the bed, I think. People don't just write stuff on the back. On the back. I don't think we can discount under anything that happens here as just happenstance. Under the rug and under there. None of this is coincidence. Everything about this is placed. But who? This creature. This creature. This is my suspicion, it, anyway. This creature they were hunting was something that's that's they were hunting, and it was different than what they've hunted before because they were hunting things like all the stuff around here that are physically horrible. And then they encountered something that's invading their nightmares. And my fear is that this is all set up for a new round of playthings. That concerns me as well. There's an explanation here. Okay. And I don't know what it is, but... There is a logical explanation to all of this. Of course there is, Nicolette. And she pointedly looks at you with the full glass of water. (laughs) You know what, when you come up with that logical explanation, I would love to hear it because everything that I've ever gone after or looked at or tried to investigate hasn't followed science, hasn't followed logic. It would make my life way easier. The research I would have had to have done. So you're things. just not bothering with the terrible accent anymore? No, I mean, I knew it was going to happen. Uh, frankly, I'm surprised that it, it took this long. I, I expected to walk on in and immediately the guy I was supposed to meet peg me and say, who are you? And then I figured I could just ask. Ask what? Well... My name is Abigail Hunter. I'm here looking for my friend. I'm I'm here. So I worked with her at the at the newspaper. Mm. She's my publisher, Eliza. And then she just disappeared. And this was the only thing that I knew was this note. And so I followed the only lead I had. And I figured if I pretended to be her, I could at least get a foot in the door. And then if there was something going on here that was suspicious, fishy, Mm -hmm. I'd at least be here and I could start to figure some stuff out. And if not, and if I showed up and it was all just a hunting thing, that'd be great. That's fine. You know, hey, I'm looking for my friend. You sent a letter to them. What do you know? And it would have been fine. Except now, hmm, that letter applies to me just as much as it did to her. That's why I was a little concerned about the fact that it was talking about you have a special skill set and everything, and we all talked about having seen monsters, and we've all what been doing... What they took Eliza to get you? I don't know. I... Which still means I'm looking for my friend. I'm still looking for her. Yeah, but what if that was... So... Bait? 
You don't know Eliza. You only know Abby. I don't only know Abby. I don't know. Okay. I don't know Eliza from Tom's house kit. <laughs> and thank you for not exposing me right away. I appreciate that. I, I didn't know what was going on. I figured everybody's got their own reasons. Because here's the, here's the deal. Mm. The only thing that I've really lied about is the name. Everything else that I've talked about is true. Everything that I've seen, everything that I've experienced, all that. The only difference is I'm the writer. I'm not the publisher. She's somewhere here, or she's been taken care of, or she's been disposed of, or she's one of the people. I don't know, but I'm worried about her, and I'm worried about the other people here, and I'm worried about us being the new playthings for whatever this creature is. Well... Um, if there's anything left of Eliza, I'm sure we'll find her. I hope so. I feel the same about your friends. I hope there's something we can do to help them, and it's not what we've already experienced, which is horrific. Leaving and them in a tortured, agony state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would like to try to assess how close to a psychological break uh, the people in the room are. Okay. Just kind of sitting back, watching them talk, watching their body language, listening to how they're processing things. Um, and I do have, um, I think it's, yeah, psychology. I would say you can use either your acumen or your intuition. Okay. And then um, you could use a couple of things, empathy, manipulation. <laughs> um, could I use vigilance? Sure. Okay. If any of you are attempting to hide your psychological mm -hmm. state. But <laughs> they all are. <laughs> you know what? If you had asked that a few minutes earlier, yes. But at this point, <laughs> no. I would say you can also roll either a charisma or... Um, I would also say intuition or resilience, if you have any of those that you'd like to pick from. Composure... I would say vigilance as well and manipulation. And if I have negotiation as my uh, aptitude, like socialization and negotiation. Sure. I'm going to use three seconds to add a D8. And then one, two, and then I have three distress. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> I'm going to spend a second to re-roll. I have a phenomenal success. Okay. Melody? I have a phenomenal success. How many hits you got? Yeah. Five. Six. <sighs> You're the only person I can't lie to. <laughs> Birdie. <laughs> I have a catastrophic failure. Oh! <laughs> okay. So because your midnight clocks have moved... Um, at least twice now for all of you and more for a couple of you. Um, any catastrophic failure will add three minutes to Ooh. your clock. Okay. It's okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had zero successes and one on the D4. Oh. I mean, I didn't roll because I'm not hiding anything. Yeah. So okay. I don't know if you want to start with me. Sure. What are you? How are you doing? So Abby has a weird glee at this moment. Okay. And some of it is she's finally gotten to drop the aspect. She doesn't have to pretend to be this person that was way more straight-laced than her. Mm -hmm. And so there's a relief and a, and a glee at finally having that out in the open. Mm -hmm. And there is, there is also excitement behind the worry and terror of what's coming. It's 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 a dichotomy. Is it like is it like she's enjoying the adrenaline of it, or is it like she's enjoying the chaos of it? A little bit the adrenaline, and a little bit this is why she's here. Okay, she's she's doing the thing that she came to do, and her suspicions were right. Okay, and so it's it's all just kind of bubbling up now. Yeah, and as far as how close she is to a break that I don't and she doesn't have an answer for because right now it's just such a relief yeah okay the the, the overriding sense is that she's she's relieved but keyed up 
Yeah. Okay. Very much. Okay. Cool. And not trying to hide anything anymore. Nice. Okay. We'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> I think Melody is holding it together. Uh, I think for everyone else, she seems about on the level as she did when she walked into the lodge. Yeah. As far as her mental well-being. But as far as looking at her, it's her more physical body language that gives her away to you. Because you're used to working with corpses. Mm -hmm. So you see that the bags under her eyes have kind of sullen in and sunk deeper mm-hmm. into her eye, her eye holes mm-hmm. <laughs> and her face is getting more gaunt and her hands are shaking even though she's holding them mm-hmm. and her chest you notice once again it's calmer now but you see it's moving now quicker and in shallower even ragged yeah like movements okay that kind of betrays that she's having a hard time yeah <laughs> Hi, Birdie. <laughs> Birdie is uh, not making eye contact with anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, she is very clearly devoid of all emotion. Any attempts of emotion are very obviously fake. Okay. Got it. As for close to a break, no. She's kind of that um, full numb. Got it. Okay. Got it. Okay. So as you all are sort of sitting in, I'm assuming still the foyer, correct? Yes. Um, What are you doing? Do we want to check those four bedrooms down here? Well, I imagine we we could go to the bug room. I I imagine the others ain't going to have anything for us. Doors are locked. We got to get keys. And we haven't tried the ones down here. Do they got am animals on them? Mm -mm. I'm just going to peek in one of them. One of the chambers? Yeah. I'll go to the next one and do the same. Okay. As you go for the handle, Mm -hmm. it's a little, um, not, it's the right word. It feels a little um, loose or like the screws aren't completely tight or it's not put in there the most correct way. But you open it, you see inside um, kind of what you initially expected from the lodge, a place for hunters to stay while they're in the middle of a hunt. Okay. Um, You can see inside there are beds and dressers and um, typically two to a room um, each. And, you know, but similar to the foyer area, very abandoned looking. It doesn't really look like there's a lot of things to gather here. Good. Um, (laughs) Yeah, that's the answer I was hoping for. Okay. (laughs) That assuages what I was suspecting. I was like, oh, four rooms, four of us. Yeah. (laughs) Before we head to this room, yeah, I'm quickly going to get changed. Because I, I expected to not be fighting for my life. So I'm not necessarily well equipped in this skirt to kind of it. slide on ice in the middle of a bathroom, if you, if, if you know. Hey, listen, I get that. So um, I'll be back. And she just walks over to where she dropped her bag in the foyer, drops her skirt pulls another skirt out and pulls it up over her and tucks her shirt in and goes, okay, now I'm ready to go. Skirt to a skirt? Yes, this one's much more flowy. And now she has on this, like, orangey-brown striped with black ruched and tied skirt that is a lot more flowy and not so tightly cinched to show off the curves of her body. See? Much more spacious. All right, let's put it to use then. To the bug room? Unfortunately. To the bug room. I hate that we're calling it that. What, do you have another idea? No. Augustina's room. There we go. I was going to offer taxidermists, but that, that does sound a little more pleasant. Since they're your friend, do you want to take the lead on this? I think it would make the most sense. It's just dead things. Oh, that's more accurate than you know. All right, let's go. And she stands there. Come on, dear. All right. I'm going to lead her and just be rubbing your back in a circle motion. Um, how hard are you doing it? 
Uh, no. Oh, massaging. Oh, oh, okay. I think that yeah. surpasses <laughs> the being lightly touched. Yeah, no, no, no. It's very like, okay. you got okay. this. You, because she's trying to like push, push you forward you. <laughs> without like being rude about it. She's like, yes, yes, let's go. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right. <laughs> I have my gun. And I throw the rifle over my shoulder. Very, uh. like very clumsily mm-hmm. like i've not hold gun held guns a lot <laughs> and i unlock the door so as you all are heading up to the parlor room as in the blueprints there are two doors to this room um, but one of them you see instead of there being a knob or any sort of handle for it it's just sort of a metal plate over um, but on the other side the door is as normal. In the center of the two of them, you see this wall. um, And similarly to the other rooms that you've been in, you see this portrait a little bit larger than the other ones within the lodge. You see that um, it's been painted at a bigger scale, likely in sort of a affectionate way. And at the bottom, You see the plaque is also a little bit larger, this time holding three lines, where it says, um, Augustina de la Mora Velvet, the taxidermist, our little girl. Um, You can see that she is this, um, not little by any means, she's a fully grown woman, a confident sort of smiling hand on the hip, um, dressed in this patterned flowing dress and a heavy sort of um, shawl or scarf over the shoulders um, and this very long black hair with sort of a um, medium skin tone. Um, She's very um, sort of, the way that Sunita's portrait was more proud but stoic, you can tell that Augustina posed for her photo or for her portrait with a little bit more um, excitement, a little bit more gusto. Does the hall still have the scent of the sea like it did previously? From where you are now, you can still smell it faintly. Um, But unlike how before it was almost the overbearing smell here, Mm -hmm. Now you're getting that previous sort of crawl space smell, right. the dead insects. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're also getting a little bit more of that forest, but now it seems that the prominent smell is is whatever bugs yeah. sort of dusty smell is. Okay. Um, you go to enter the key, and you feel that it doesn't enter all the way. And you're sort of curious as to why. It almost feels like there's something jamming it. Give give me a moment. What's wrong? It's not going all the way in. And I'm going to bend down and put my eye up to the keyhole. Okay. So as you sort of bend down and look through the keyhole, your eye is met with this almost bright purple light for just a moment before it turns away and you're left in sort of just darkness behind and you can hear the sort of pitter patter of what sounds like small little feet over the floor. I didn't see anything, I think it should be good. (laughs) And I'm gonna try the key again real fast while I know that light's not there. Okay, so as you enter the key this time, you feel it pass through just the same as all the other keys, and this time it turns. Oh, I must have put it in wrong when I open the door. The door opens before you, and inside you can see the room itself feels the same temperature as the rest of the house so so far, the rest of the lodge. Um, You can see inside that the furniture is dusty and full of webs and nests that appear sort of draped over all of it in this thin, cotton-like material almost. On 
this is a longer room than you've experienced from before. So in, in the first sort of part of it, there's a rocking chair. You can see a sort of um, shelf full of fabrics and um, knitting needles and um, sewing or making clothes making clothing material um, on sort of the farther side to the left where you assume that the other door would have opened into is a vanity area a kind of large um, desk like uh, piece of furniture with a nice big mirror in front of it you can see different perfumes and makeup sort of strung along there and all around are sort of these portraits of different um, beautiful women, just women that you don't really recognize, but just a bunch of them sort of scattered and pasted and framed around almost in like an admiration. And you can see next to the wardrobe that sort of sits at the back of the room is this large, almost mound and you can see it sort of moving back and forth just slightly. And as you enter and the noise of the door moving, you hear this sort of <sighs> and the mound is moving. And just for a small glance, this head turns to look and you can see on the front of this face, a doll-like appearance, but cracked and sort of wrong in places. You see that um, her limbs are like mannequins almost. Um, one arm is sort of, sort of stunted up further than the other that is has another sort of limb attached to it to make it elongated. And this torso is sort of soft and plush, like a doll's would be. And these oversized pin needles are sort of stuck into different parts of the flesh. Covering her back is this plate of porcelain with a bunch of small, almost ball joints attached and a wave of small porcelain unused hands just sort of swaying as she moves. You also see inside the pocket of that apron a small doll <sighs> sitting perched there gently and you see as you all <laughs> enter <a> larger <clears throat> Assumedly, Augustina, um, her visage covered in that mask sort of scrambles away, sort of backing herself into the corner. And she sort of, who? Uh, Augustina, what did they do to you? And you see as she sort of covers the front of her face in sort of this shy, almost um, embarrassed look. And the doll from the apron, sort of one hand clasping onto the edge of it, crawls out from that pocket. And she sort of, what are you all doing here? Does this doll look like any of the people I've seen in any of my visions? As you look at her, you feel as though her image looks closely, but not entirely well replicated of the older woman who was drawing up the blueprints with the older man. And did I get a name for that person? You did not. You see now as the doll has sort of crawled forward and s sort of stands on her own two legs that sort of similar to the way that um, Earl had those kind of creatures crawling under the skin, that her movements are nothing but bugs acting as muscle and ligament. She sort of, I asked you a question. 
Um, 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 excuse us. Um, I came here because Augustina invited me. She wanted my help. No. You seem to say no with a lot of confidence. Well, I'm sure. Well, we have your map. Does that help? My map. Show, show her the map. Yeah. She sort of, oh, hmm? my map. I wrote those notes there, didn't I? And you see that though she is speaking, Augustina, who has sort of covered herself in almost this shameful manner, is sitting behind and the smaller appendage is sort of held next to her chest. She is moving it at the same time that the puppet is speaking. Can I, uh, while the doll seems to be distracted by what y'all just did, I'm going to try and make my way up to Augustina. And I'm going to try and take her face in my hands. As you sort of approach, you see under that mask, the eyes underneath have sort of widened into this unnaturally round state, almost like there's no lid or there's no bottom sort of waterline. It's just sort of a dome sitting on top of skin. And her hair, having known her, was long and well-kept and is now sort of this black, sort of ragged, looking um, upkeep. And she, I, it's okay, you don't, I don't know what they did to you, Augustina, but I'm gonna fix this, okay? They didn't, they didn't do any, and you see as she begins speaking, the puppet turns quickly to look at both of you, and I think that's quite enough. I'm sorry, we've been terribly rude. What is your name? Creepy puppet thing? Do you not know me? I recognize you from the map, from drawing it. You do. You and your friend, you placed the exit to this place, right? My friend? Yeah, you had someone with you who was helping you. You mean, my husband? I didn't get his name, so that's good to know. Well, you are within his lodge. Should you not know? I'm a bit new to this place, let's say. Hmm. While I've been talking to the doll, can I have also started to approach? Sure. I'm approaching the doll, though, okay. that I'm talking to. Uh. How close can I get? Make a charisma and I will let you do either empathy or manipulation. Uh, I'm gonna go empathy. Okay. And uh, well, let's see what happens actually. I'm gonna spend a sec, I'm gonna spend two seconds and reroll two of these. I'm gonna use a new power that I have as I'm trying to be incredibly persuasive so I can get close, kind and gentle. And I'm gonna use double think to uh, double my successes. Okay. So that is six successes. Six successes. Okay. So as you are approaching, you see as both the um, sort of elderly looking puppet as well as the um, the more doll-like in appearance, Augustina, they both sort of recoil a bit and you see grandma sort of turn the head. She, you, all of you are welcome to stay if you'd like. That's very kind. You, this is why we've 
made this place. Augustina, I'm I'm not talking to to you right now. Augustina, I can't stay. Do you remember why I can't stay, Augustina? There are three reasons I can't stay here. You see Augustina sort of, I, I do know, I, I remember, I, I just, I. And you see again, the sort of look from you to this standing puppet. She sort of, it's all right, dear. I'm just going to walk over and start getting a close look at the puppet. Like, no pretense of respect, no uh, courtesy, treating it like an actual person. It is a purely, how is this working? So as you are directly approaching, Mm -hmm. you see as the puppet sort of head turns. What are you looking for? How you work. Well, I won't allow anyone to just peruse without looking my best. And you see Augustina sort of, yes, mother. And she sort of stands. And now that she's doing so, you can see this large sort of lumbering structure to her body. And even in the way that um, Earl had been large in structure, this is far more of a wider sort of upper shoulder and torso area. Mm -hmm. And her shadow sort of cascades the room in this darkness. And that long sort of arm reaches up towards one of the nets of moth or whatever it might be and plucks this sort of centipede looking object Mm. and she brings it back over to the puppet she sort of here you are here you are and she sort of that's far better isn't it Absolutely. Um, while I, that was happening, could Melody have been using her ability to hide what she is doing to have trained her, the hunting rifle on the puppet? Okay. And as uh, Augustina comes back down, presumably to hand her this, Melody looks at her and says, I'm sorry, Augustina. I'm going to fix this. And can I shoot her? (gasps) You absolutely can. Please make me, I believe it's coordination and composure. Um, And then you can upgrade with marksmanship. And I have specialization in the rifle as well. Don't miss. (laughs) And I'm gonna spend three seconds to add another D8. Okay. Okay, so that's just coordination. How many distress dice do you have currently? I currently have three. Roll without them for just a moment. Perfect. And then for shooting, coordination and composure. Mm-hmm. Okay. Get good. I'm going to spend another three seconds Okay. to re-roll these. Okay, can the puppet not be looking at me? <laughs> ah. All right, so without distress dice, I'm at five. And if you would please <gasps> roll Ooh. your distress Here. die. Oh, no. This one? Yeah. Oh. I still have a phenomenal success. Okay. Because of my specialization in rifles. So as you fire, 
Where are you aiming? The head. Okay. So as you line up the shot and sort of whisper your last apologies to Augustina, you point the rifle. Um, how much damage do you do? Uh, I'm, I don't know for the rifle. Okay. It's two. Two. So yeah, we'll two, say two plus. Okay. And then as you fire, watch the sort of force of the bullet run into the back of the head. I will also have you, if you would please, grab out the eye. Oh. oh my god. Uh, it's fine, it's just an eyeball. I think I got it. And you watch as the force sort of plum, 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 plum. this little wriggling sort of orb attached to some sort of bug-like appendage now slivering, slithering sort of over the floor and landing almost directly, sort of moving its way back around to you and you're sort of able to snatch it up for just a moment. And you have that now. Oh. And you see as the puppet sort of, how rude of you. And looks towards Augustina and Augustina grabs her, sort of by the back of the neck, and places her back in that apron. Looks at all of you, this large doll-like appearance. And this time, without her own mouth moving or the hand sort of moving in pantomime, just the grandmother sort of speaks. She, get out. I run to the door. <laughs> Um, and I will need all of you to make initiative rolls. Uh. <laughs> so, Nicolette. Uh, one. <laughs> I did not do well. Okay. Oh, don't worry. Um, Eliza. Four. Or are you? Well, I'm Abby now. But... Okay, so Abby. Four. Four. What's a catastrophic failure for initiative? Um... <laughs> A negative one. <laughs> you will take, you will add another three minutes to yep. your clock. Yep. Mm. And I am up to hour four. This is the most exciting initiative ever. Uh, Melody. Uh, I got zero using six seconds to ignore distress. I, I was, I was wondering how were you at four hours? And then I remembered trauma triggers. <laughs> As you all are sort of standing in this room, you start booking it towards the door. You watch as the sort of um, appearance of Augustina in sort of this lead rage by whatever entity is living inside of sort of the apron of um, her outfit is now sort of <laughs> cackling and laughing as Suddenly, Augustina's head almost turns the full way around on the top of the neck. And you see as in that moment, the hands and legs and limbs move backwards to a different position. And you see all of those arms that sort of live on the back of that porcelain are now crawling and moving her quickly over the walls and the rafters of this room. She is unfortunately going to go first. Of course she is. I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> <sighs> She's probably going for you since you're booking it towards the door. <laughs> and um, you watch as she latches onto the top sort of rafter for just a moment. And then with one of the many sort of arm, the sort of long arms, she pulls one of those large pin needles from the sort of soft flesh, rears it back, and javelin throws it towards you. 
I would like to dodge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so please roll me a composure and coordination roll. Okay. It's been wonderful getting to know you, Nicolette. <laughs> Has it? <laughs> um, I'm. Jesus. I'm going to take. I'm going to use six seconds to add some D8s. Gotcha. One success, so uh, One common success. success. Okay. So as the um, this like long sort of, and you can see that sort of like silver, it's probably the only pristine metal that you've seen in the lodge so far. It's not rusted, but it's this very bright almost color and it's reflecting the lights in the room, sort of draws from this flesh sort of part of the skin, rears back and tosses at you and you feel as it just almost feels like it's going to go through and pierce out of the back of your arm. You take three points of damage. Okay. I scream very loudly. And as she does this, she's sort of in this, almost like a cry rage of mm -hmm. like her vision has been almost taken over by whatever it is that compels her to do this. And in the apron, you can still hear that puppet and they're both sort of speaking and interacting at the same time that that puppet sort of <laughs> <laughs> laughing at you mm -hmm. abby i'm gonna start backing towards the door but i want to look up at this creature mm -hmm. and I'm gonna say augustina if your nightmare is not living up to your family lineage you can help right now. You don't have to live in your grandmother's shadow. Stop this, let us go. I will have you make a charisma, and I will say empathy. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm using six seconds to add two D8s. Okay. I got two successes. Two successes. Okay, so as you sort of say this up to um, Augustina, you see for a moment as you particularly on the word legacy. She pauses for just a moment before you see that sort of puppet hand reach out towards one of the pin needles that is close to her and shoves it back into the skin and you hear Augustina sort of, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And she continues to crawl. Don't be sorry, be stronger. And I'll keep backing towards the door, but that's my turn. Okay. You continue backing towards the door. Nicolette. I, I'm just going for the door. Okay. Pure blind panic at this point. Just, I don't know why, but for some reason, the puppet has completely unnerved Nicolette. So she is going for that door. As someone who works with bodies, mm -hmm. the slightest details you could ascertain of the puppet is similar to all of the taxidermy in the house. It's not wood. Yeah. That answers that. All right. Um, can I amend what I'm doing then? What you're doing? Yeah. Sure. Um, so she, uh, she takes the needle to the arm and kind of staggers aside, screams very loudly, reaches down, and picks up the needle, turns to the group and says, the puppet, killed the puppet. It's, it's flesh. Oh, Nicolette, I'm going to kill that fucking puppet. I believe you. I'm here to help. And now I'm going to run for the door. <laughs> gotcha. So that's what you'd like to do? Yes, but I'm holding that needle. Gotcha. Just in case. Gotcha. So you run towards the door as Melody. What are you doing? Uh, she says that, placing this monstrosity that she found into one of her side skirt pockets. She takes the gun and loads it again and aims it up at the puppet and doesn't say anything and just shoots. Go for it. And I'm going to add... A D8. A D8? For three seconds. 
a phenomenal success. Yes. So how many how many hits did you get? Five hits. Okay. So as you aim up towards sort of the ceiling where Augustina is hanging from parts of the rafters and that apron is sort of swinging back and forth with this sort of maniacally laughing puppet figure, you fire again and this loud sort of bang rings out through the rest of the room and you watch as it sort of lands in the soft sort of center of this puppet. And as it does, these swarms of bugs <sighs> begin falling out of the hole and are sort of almost like water falling onto the floor underneath you and they begin crawling softly over your legs and over your skin and I will say that that will trigger your trauma trigger. That hits both of us. Why is she going to spot us? <laughs> and if I can move, I'm going to... Nope, I can't move. I can't move. And that's the end of my turn. Brody. What do I take now that I am again in swarms of vermin? Um, four, let's see... For each combat round that a player is exposed to the trauma trigger, you gain a minute. All right, let me just go ahead and throw that on. Uh, so she's hanging from the ceiling with the apron hanging down. Given that Birdie's only 4'11", how high above me is that? Is that like reachable, like touchable? Mm, given that you're 4'11", it's probably not reachable. It isn't a super tall ceiling though. If I jumped, could I touch it? You could probably get on top of like a chair and then okay. jump and touch it. So Birdie, completely numb, but clearly in a bad way. She's just gonna grab a chair and just calmly walk over, place the chair beneath, go up and just reach and touch. And I'm going to cast Excite on the apron containing the puppet to set it on fire. Okay. As uh, everything, uh, what I am touching gains three damage and causes it to burst into flame and it inflicts burning. As you sort of over by the vanity, there's sort of a small makeup stool that you sort of pull out and just very calmly sort of up and touch one of the rafters and you feel that connection to some sort of power either within you or gifted to you and use it to channel it to that apron and you watch as it bursts into this bright orange sort of flame and the um, puppet sort of goes from laughing in this way to being having gotten shot and is sort of still recoiling from that. And as she's sort of looking for the wound to try and cover it from keeping the bugs from spilling out, the all around her ignites. And you probably would recognize now the smell of burning flesh. Flush. Yeah. As she sort of, oh, what? And you see Augustina sort of go to reach for her and try to pull her out of the apron, but is kind of unable to because of how hot it is. Although you would also find it a little odd considering that most of her limbs look like they're made out of porcelain. And she sort of, mother, mother, I'm sorry. And she continues to sort of drape from rafter to rafter, um, looking for a way for both of them to be sort of put out. I think Bertie's just going to get back down and just sit in the chair and watch everything. Rolling back to the taxidermist. She is sort of trying to put out this apron and as it's still sort of alight and is burning away and you can see also the puppet inside is, is sort of struggling, she sort of realizes for a moment and makes small eye contact with you, Abby. And she 
reaches behind her and unties the apron. And you watch as it falls onto the floor, as well as the puppet inside. And she sort of, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mandy. And she continues to sort of string from each to each before sort of getting far enough away from that fire to land in front of you, Melody. I, I know that you have other things you need to do, but you could, you could just stay. Skylar, why don't you come with me? The kids love you, August. She sort of looks over at that pile of burning and looks back at you and... I can't. You know I can't. And with that smaller arm, reaches out, almost as if to cusp you by the shoulder, and in a flash, moves to your collar and grabs you. If you would like to try and dodge from this. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I would think to. Okay. Because I, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> okay. I'll fix it, Melody. We can be together. We'll just, we'll just stay. And she begins walking you over to that large wardrobe and the rocking chair. I, August, you know I can't stay with you. Please, just put me down, P please. And I'm gonna grab her hand, if, if I can. I'm gonna grab her hand and use my manifestation healing cascade to heal any actual physical issues that are wrong with her and fill her with whatever love I can muster and say, you have to let me go. I'm gonna burn this lodge down, August, I promise you. But I'm gonna try and get you out. I'm gonna find something, I promise, I promise. Just wait here for me. And can I try and manipulate her? You absolutely can. For this particular Roll. I will allow you to use your highest stats that you have. So that would be, so like highest attribute as well as yes. skill? Mm -hmm. So that would be coordination and still manipulation. Perfect. First is coordination. Thanks. That's two successes on that. And manipulation, would my aptitude in negotiation help me here? Sure. Yeah. I'm gonna spend six to reroll six of these. Okay. Ooh. Oh, thank God. That, that takes it up to five successes before my distress dice. How many distress dice do you roll? Four. Okay. Four successes, Four successes. total for a ph phenomenal success. She brings you to just before the wardrobe and sets you on the floor again. And it is gentle. And that hand sort of reaches up and just barely touches the edges of your hair. You take another minute. And that sets me over to hour five. <gasps> In that moment, as you feel that and you remember that night, the touch, but just slightly, almost like 
wind or a bug. And similarly to how you had seen that visage of that creature when you slid across the bathroom floor, looking into Augustina's eyes, they shift for just a moment. And you swear you hear in your head the sound of a grandfather clock turning over an hour. And you sense in you that something has changed. And for the continuation of this episode, you are at max distress die that you can roll. Okay. <laughs> and you return to sort of the scene that you were in of Augustina sort of having just played with your hair softly. And she, I can't. Okay. Uh, you don't have to stay. But I can't let them leave. Who? They're already gone. Look, Augustina. And I'm going to try and pull her head back towards me as hard as I can with the very little strength I have shaking. They're, they're gone. You did a great job. Everyone burned in the fire. We will return to that as Abby. What are you doing? As this is happening, she's been let go? Yes. Okay. They're just sort of standing adjacent to each other. Where is the needle that got thrown at like a javelin? My hands. You want it? <laughs> I don't fight. <laughs> Neither do I. I want to walk up to that puppet. Is it still moving on the ground? You can see on the ground where the fire is sort of taking place. It almost seems as now there are bugs sort of still crawling out of this creature and sort of covering the bugs themselves trying to cover the fire, almost put it out with their own bodies, but they're burning away too quickly before they can do it. And you're also smelling that as you walk up to it and the puppet is sort of laying there, one of the eyes sort of missing and dislodged and just squirming, sort of still in the fire. I'm going to make eye contact with that leftover eye and say, it's time for this nightmare to end. I want to plunge this right into that other eye. Roll either and you could do strength or because I feel like this would be you know it. You could also use intuition. Thank you. Um, and then I will say, I'll, I'll let you pick either. Um, I'll let you use your wit if you would like as well. I would love that. Thank you so much. I'm going to spend six seconds to remove distress dice from the roll. OK. And that gives me two successes. Two successes. So as you sort of stand over this writhing creature made of flesh and filled with insects, you rear up similarly to how Augustina had a moment ago and plunge this oversized needle into the other eye. And you watch as it sort of moves over to the side in this soft, yolky way. and as the rest of the body sort of, it's kind of moved off to the side, but the orb sort of looks over at you. Please roll me, roll me a d4, please. Okay. That's a four. Four, all right. So as you plunge it into the eye of this puppet, you see it make eye contact with you for just a moment before the bugs all start to run and wither away from it. And all of it sort of deflates almost the structure of the puppet before 
in that little hole where the mouth was is a still crawling caterpillar. Mm -mm. Oh. <laughs> and it just sort of rides around there. And I'm going to yank the needle out and something tells me to take this thing. Maybe four more answers later, I don't know. And then I look back over at everybody and it's time to go. And I want to head towards the door. And that's when I pull her face away from them. They're gone. They're already gone. I'm going to go too. We're going to fix this and I'll come back for you, August. As you're saying this, you can also hear from that deflation of the puppet body, this sort of long and the bugs continuing to crawl sort of over the floor. And now that the puppet has sort of left in consciousness, you see around the room these um, cocoons or um, different sort of... Pupa? Yes. Beginning to kind of crawl their way out from their homes and these moth-like creatures beginning to sort of emerge and flap gently. And you can see they almost look like they're made of fabric. And yet when they open completely, the other side is that soft, preserved flesh. And as you're all beginning to speak, and Melody, you are still there holding Augustina's head, which is massive in your hands. You sort of see as behind the mask, those wide sort of bulbous eyes are wet with tears. She, I just won't look, okay? Okay. And she sort of takes her arm and pushes you gently to the side and opens that wardrobe behind you. And you can see inside this tool kit of taxidermy making different scalpels and stitching and needles, things to use to dry the skins out. And she sort of almost unnaturally steps inside it. And the rest of the hands sort of behind as well are almost folding in on themselves as she kind of takes a seat inside. And you see as she takes one of the arms and pulls both of the door closed while she's sort of facing out. And she, I'll wait. Using her ability to move quietly, Melody doesn't make any sound as she starts to leave the room. And as she closes, presumably after everyone else has left, I, I want to do something. Mm -hmm. You're still, so just to clarify, you're all still, we haven't opened the door yet. Right. And we still got to, I haven't forgot about you. <sighs> it would be, technically it would be your turn. Okay. Right Watching all this happen, Nicolette kind of stands there taking it all in and then turns around and runs over to one of the bookcases looking for a book and pulls it off the shelf and opens it to see if she can read it. Oh, mm hmm Okay. You're not looking for anything in particular? No, I just want to see if I can read what's in the book. Okay, so you sort of run over to one of the shelves in the room, mm -hmm. and you can see there are maybe only a couple of books here. Mm -hmm. Most of the shelves are filled with 
fabrics, needles, knitting, crochet, that sort Mm -hmm. of material. You go to reach for one of the books and pull it and just quickly flip open the page. You find... Okay, this may have been a mistake. No, no, this was brilliant. You, you, you that was amazing. <laughs> Seven minutes. Congratulations. No matter what happens, that was brilliant. You find, as you open it, a beam of light sort of emerges and emerges and emerges. And the lights are flickering. Drops the book immediately walks over against the wall and just pushes herself against the wall and starts mumbling to herself. You gain a minute. Mm -hmm. But looking at the pages, there seems to be writing on them. It seems to be a normal book. Mm -hmm. The rest of you in the room do not ascertain this light. Cool. Um, she, she throws herself up against the wall, hands up first, and then they come down and just, she's, she's touching the, the stable wall, the pure reality. And she begins, uh, saying over and over, I feel my breath, my heart, it beats. I speak the words and they repeat. I feel my breath, my heart, it beats. I speak the words and they repeat and just keeps doing that. As you are against the sort of wall, would you please make me a coordination and composure roll? Mm -hmm. Complicated success, no hits. Complicated success, okay. So you feel as you sort of lean against this wall and you are trying to find reality, something real, Mm -hmm. you feel as those moths begin to very softly Mm -hmm. land over and almost like they're perched on the thin hairs of your arm. Mm -hmm before a sort of small stick, almost like a prickle happens over your skin. And looking at it, you realize it is the proboscis of the little creatures Mm -hmm. stabbing into your skin. You take another point of damage. I do apologize because the the light got me. Um, Could I actually read the words? Looking at it? Yeah. You can see, like, looking at it, it seems to be a collection of children's short stories. Okay. Basically, I was I was trying to see if I couldn't read. I was going to say, oh, it's a dream. But if I can make out words, you can't read in your dreams. So that answers that question. <laughs> okay. Um, she's just mumbling up against the wall. Okay. I'm going to say, because you've had a lot of interaction, I'm going to move to what Bertie is doing, because you are just sitting in a chair, correct? And I went ahead and took my minutes, because there's still a bunch of books. Um, seeing, uh, seeing the moment that you two have had... Birdie kind of changes her focus and looks back at the puppet. And she's just going to calmly get up. She's just going to walk over to the puppet, grasp it by the torso and the head, and rip the head off. Okay. And assuming she does that, just set it back down and then go sit back on the stool. So you pick up this puppet and you feel in your hands almost this soft leather texture while mixed with almost that very sun aged, almost like a raisin in Mm -hmm. texture. And you sort of grip onto it 
and pull it apart. As you do, you also gained an hour this episode, didn't you? Mm -hmm. You do this, and for a moment, you feel in your hand something small and furred and a sort of long pink tail running over your hand. And you feel it in your other hand as well. And as you realize this texture is not what you were feeling a moment ago, you feel these tiny hands of these creatures as they begin to multiply and cover your limbs. And you, for just a moment, feel that sensation and see them before the puppet has been dropped on the floor again. And you are looking at it. I need you mm -hmm. to please make me strength and coordinations check. You can apply athletics. Okay. So that is one hit, uh, just a common success. You feel as this sort of turn of your own mental sort of state of these creatures crawling over you and the puppet before you, and in your head as well, you swear you hear a clock chime until the initiative order is over you are considered you are considered restrained am i restrained in this exact pose yes okay. so um essentially your body is pinned you cannot move from the place you are stuck you may still attack dodge or otherwise act normally and you can move if um some other things happen, or you are moved by someone else. Okay. Then I am frozen in place, but not much different than how she was before. <laughs> I'm just staring at the two pieces of the doll. Melody, what are you doing? Uh, are, she's against the wall. Mm -hmm. She's just sitting relaxed standing because I ripped oh, it and then I got frozen. Where is Abby? I would have started to walk away and then she did that and I stopped and looking at her like I'm about to do something. Then Melody will nod her head a couple times and go over to a, like a desk, mm -hmm. a workbench and take this very small box out that has a little butterfly that's been pinned decoratively with a note that's addressed to August that was supposed to be sent a long time ago. And she places it on the bench and says, I love you, August. And she's just going to calmly walk out of the room without looking at anyone else. You head towards the door. The sort of uh, armoire that um, Augustina had walked into, you see as a um, part of the door sort of slides across and opens just enough for the eyes to sort of peer out in this almost childlike manner. And as you say this and walk towards the door, you see one of the hands sort of reach up and just the two smallest fingers sort of sticking out before the slot closes again. Abby, what are you doing? I'm gonna walk up to Birdie. I'm gonna stand in front of her. Hey, Birdie, it's time to go. Would love to. I'll hold out my hand. 
And she's like, not moving. And when you don't move, I'll just gently put my hand in your hand. We're done here. Let's get out of this nightmare. Come on. Okay. And similar to the last time, I will gently pull forward and head towards the door. And I'm glancing over at you, but it's one thing at a time. Okay. So I'm going to try to bring you over to the door, get you away from the puppet. You feel a small amount of resistance, almost as though Birdie is kind of stuck to the floor, essentially. But still, your sense is you are still able to lead. And you do. And almost like pulling a stone statue over the floor. You have to put a little bit of some strength into it, but Birdie is also not not letting you. And so it's sort of this slow, but still working way of her being pulled across. And I'm, I'm just kind of keeping an eye as we're moving to make sure that I'm getting the sense that she's still okay with me doing this. But then every time I'm getting the, okay, and I pull and pull until we get to the door to you. And do we get to the door? Yeah, you could probably get to the door. (sighs) You got the door? Of course. And I'm going to try and open the door if I can. You go to turn the knob, it turns, the door opens. As it opens, I'm going to hold Birdie's hand out to you to take. Hey, baby bird. Why don't we go get some water? And I'm going to guide her into the foyer. And I'll wait and look over at the other member of this group. Nicolette. What are you doing? I'm just, her eyes are closed. She's chanting and she's going to start doing this to try to dislodge the uh, bugs that are on her. Okay. If you would please make me a strength and coordination check. Mm. Complicated success. No hits. Okay. So as you're sort of still rubbing the hands over your arms and trying to just dislodge these creatures. They are swarming in this room. And some of them, though they are focused on you, you can see also they are running to points of light around the room as they are moths. And a couple of them, with the fluttering, the rapid sort of fluttering of these wings. I won't say you take a minute, because technically the flickering is a little minimal, but considering Mm -hmm. the state that you are already in, please add three seconds. But you are sort of managing to keep them off of you from at least doing more damage to you. Yeah. Yeah. She is going to, uh, realizing that there's there's more and more flickering going on, she's going to just hit fight or flight, and she's opting for flight. So she's just going to blindly, panicked, run for the door. Okay. So as you are seeing sort of the lights beginning, not necessarily at the point that you are falling into any sort of pattern or feel like you are really trapped in this nightmare of yours, you're able to sort of collect enough to where you begin flying yourself, essentially, yes. <laughs> towards the door. Abby, you're still there waiting with it open? Yeah, and I see you running towards me, and I would be doing 
whatever motions to try to encourage her to come. Okay. And you can also see Abby there waiting. And as you both sort of meet in that space, you're able to make it there just fine. As you both sort of are there by the door, you run out. Yes. Okay. You run out. Abby, what are you doing? I run out. Okay. Are you closing the door behind you? No. Okay. I'm just running through. You both run through. Technically. I feel like I run through, hit the wall opposite the door, and just slide down it and curl up. Okay. Yeah. So you are you run sort of out of this door, and mm-hmm. the way that the... Um, you actually you run into the banister yeah. on the sort of balcony yeah. area, and you sort of just like standing next to it are feeling this just overwhelming sensation mm-hmm. as you all sort of are standing there outside of the door. Do I still have the javelin knitting needle in my hand? Would you have pulled it back out? Yeah, I plunged, yanked, yeah. and I had plans for it, but people did awesome things, so I didn't, I just kept it with me. Okay, yeah, you would still have it. Okay. I want to turn around and look through the open doorway and take a last glance what's going on now that we've left, because the other rooms we've fled and closed off our exit, and this is the first time we've exited, and I can still hear, see, smell, whatever's going on. Is it different or is, has anything changed? Make either an acumen or intuition. Okay. With reaction or wit. Okay. Um, I'm gonna use my double think again to uh, double my successes. Okay. So that's six successes. Okay. As you peer back into the room, you see still those creatures sort of swarming and hatching and moving their way rapidly to points of light. And it almost creates this dark space around you, but you can still see in like the faintest bit of coverage of light, that door to the wardrobe move open just slightly and one of the porcelain hands sort of wrapping around it to open it. You just sort of see as Augustina perched inside, scared, timid look on her face meeting yours. And she... I'll... I'll be stronger. You're in charge. You've got this. And I will gently close the door. Okay. Closing the door. You all are there on the sort of balcony landing. I'm going to take a deep breath and try to collect myself and uh, suppress the terror that reliving the that moment in the underpass um and uh so i'd like to use centering to collect myself and find my stability again that's one success one success yeah common success so you're you're using centering yes will you Elaborate what that does. Um, it it basically allows you to uh, prepare yourself or come down from uh, traumatic experiences and sort of uh, center yourself, uh, recover from it. You can use it to help push things out of your mind, um, or you can use it to uh, uh, sort of give yourself a, a mental. Uh, solidification. Getting out of the room and being able to see now you are back in that 
abandoned section of the lodge mm-hmm. of no one is here nothing is no lights are flickering around me mm-hmm. and i know at the very least that this part this part of the house is real yeah there must be something to it because you are standing in it i will say you may take two minutes off of your clock how's birdie doing she's messing with her hair she's picking her nails she's fixing the bow on her dress smoothing it out grabbing her mirror to fix her eye makeup Melody. I'm sorry. I'm going back for her. I'm going back for her. We should head downstairs to the box. There's no her to go back to. You know that. Let's go. But if you want to come back, once we're out of here, even if all we do is burn this place to the ground like you said... Oh, we're doing that before we leave. I'm with you. I won't let her live like that. Not my August. I can't. You won't. You already helped. Let's get ourselves out of here now. Let's do that. And I'm gonna head over to the box. Um, I got this from in there, but... Yeah, we're picking up a collection of interesting trinkets, are we? And I'm holding the needle in one hand and the... Centipede. Still squirming centipede? Still moving? As you're holding it, It feels as it's almost hardened, but it still has the texture of said centipede. Can I look into the box and see whether there's a hole big enough for the centipede or big enough for whatever this is? (laughs) You get the sense that the hole is meant for the centipede. Um... Could I? You want to trade? Actually, yes. <laughs> May I look at that before you do anything? Oh, it's I like just... you know what I'm going to do already, right? Well, yeah. What do you want to see? I want to do a medical examination on it. You do a medical, I'll do another one. Meanwhile, you get us closer to getting us out of here. His name is George, by the way. Let's get rid of George. Placing George (laughs) inside of the box, you sense that sort of whatever it is, and you probably know it best having felt it, something in the house moves, an energy, a cloud, something dark, But nonetheless, as you place George inside the box, you feel that shared between the four of you before the box closes once more. And that is where we will end this chapter of the Velvet Lodge.